when comparing bids, the architect should uh, look for, so we're looking at a multiple bids and we're trying to figure out what it is that we want to be able to advise the owner about. We just said that the role of the architect is to advise the owner on how to, uh, and on, their, on the architect's thoughts about the various bidders, uh, and then let the owner choose the, choose the bid. Uh, so we have uh, what change orders are proposed, uh, references, method of work, capacity, uh, phase one report, proposed fee, GL insurance forms. Uh, the answers here are going to be uh, obviously references. Uh, you're going to want to know, have they, worked, have they done a similar project? Uh, can you talk to somebody who uh, has worked with them before? Uh, that's going to be one of the main things that the architects will end up doing is calling other owners and say, hey, how'd it go with uh, you know, ABC construction? Uh, did it work out? Uh, were they good with the change orders? Uh, you know, what, did they meet the schedule? Um, so you're going to be checking up references. That happens uh, pretty regularly on these kinds of things. Um, the method of work and the capacity, absolutely. So capacity might be, uh, let's say it's a, a construction firm that has four people in it uh, and they're going to be building a cabin and they're going to be bringing the plumbers and electricians in separately and the concrete people separately, uh, but they got four people on staff and they're going to build a cabin. Well, that sounds totally fine. They could totally build a cabin with four people. All right, uh, you're going to be building a uh, high school for a thousand kids and they got four people. It's like, uh, that it depends on the method of work, like maybe it's just somebody who always subs out everything and then the four people, well maybe that works. Um, but if, if they're trying to do all the carpentry and everything themselves and they only got four people for a high school for a thousand kids, that ain't just, this is not going to fly, it's just not going to work. So that's the kind of thing you'd be uh, trying to check out and make sure uh, that that all of the bids actually are believable and that they have the capacity to do the, the project that they're um, suggesting. Uh, and then uh, the third one of the bunch is the proposed fee, which seems sort of obvious, but uh, may have gotten missed by some folks. So what are they gonna do it for? That's the, that's the main question everybody's really interested in. Uh, it doesn't really matter if they say they can do it uh, for a certain amount of money, but they don't have the capacity or their references are terrible. Uh, the proposed fee is only so useful. Uh, they have stellar references uh, and they clearly have the capacity, but their proposed fee is three times what everybody else is. Well, uh, you know, you're probably not gonna choose them. Uh, so you're kind of going back and forth between these. And there's a bunch of other issues as well, but definitely these three are gonna be kind of the main way that you're gonna be looking at the information to help the owner understand what they're about to get into. Uh, looking at A, what change orders are proposed. Change orders don't happen until a bidder has already uh, become the GC, so it can't be A. Uh, you don't know at the bidding phase anything about change orders because there's no contract to change. A change order is a change to the contract. Uh, phase one report is about environmental issues. Uh, and doesn't fit to this situation. Uh, the GL insurance forms um, actually uh, are not part, uh, they may be part of the, the bid package, uh, but they're not uh, typically an important part. Uh, GL means the general liability. Uh, it's not their uh, construction liability uh, insurance. General liability, every, every business essentially has GL insurance. And so if you have it, it's, it's not really a big part of the discussion.